Hello and welcome. Today I'll be going over dev update number 25 for V Rising, Spellcraft Unbound. I've been super excited for this update. I'm like a kid in a candy store right now. Just, oh, I cannot wait to see what's in here. Especially as we're getting really, really close to the final release, which before I read this, the release date has not been officially announced, but I'm willing to put bets on the 17th of May. That'll be like the two year anniversary for the game. So it's just a guess throwing that out there, but I guess maybe we'll hopefully see a date here. I don't know. Let's keep an eye out, I guess. All right, let's get started. Let's get right into it. Let's take a quick look at this creature here. What the hell is this? This looks like, I don't even know what this is. It's okay. So it's definitely some kind of undead creature. There's some like wings here. It looks like bat wings almost. It's so weird. I. Wow, I really like the um, the headpiece of this thing. It's just, it's so, it's weird because it kind of has this like alien shaped head with like these weird like curvy, like it, it's, it's so strange. It's really cool looking though, I will say. I mean, they got some good artists over there. So <laughs> uh, I guess we'll be finding out what that is eventually. I wonder if that's going to be part of the new um, faction of uh, enemies or whatever, like how they showed the succubus in like a previous like i think like what two updates ago we saw like a succubus and they talked about it or something like that um i wonder if this is if this is kind of like a nod to like um unit families that they were talking about in previous updates but you know I, i'm just gonna keep going i'm, I'm kind of getting all lost in the sauce here so yeah let's get right into it blessings for the bloodthirsty with great enthusiasm, we bring yet another developer update from the crypts of Stunlock Studios. Today, we'll be delving into changes with the progression from how spells are acquired to recipes and the quality of unlife. <laughs> That's funny. That smooths the whole experience into a delightful intuitive process. We aim to put a new twist on how to play, delivering much desired changes in unexpected packages. Light some candles and put on some haunting tunes to set the mood. It's time to settle in to read more about the future of our villainous apparitions. The many paths of victory. Hunting V-Bloods and V-Rising gives you some flexibility in how you carve your way through Vardoran. You can opt out of defeating certain bosses if their spells or unlocks don't interest you, and often each tier of roughly same level bosses allows you to tackle them with whatever order you like. You can even strike out and face foes well outside your level range if you're looking for a challenge. All right. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why you would be in there with heavy holy radiation. This person's crazy. <laughs> Under leveled? Nah, I'd win. You know, I'd like to see someone actually try this. I, I'm sure someone out there has probably done this already. <laughs> That's crazy. <clears throat> On the other hand, if you want to rain down burning violet fire with Chaos Volley, you have to track down Lydia, the Chaos Archer, and drink her blood. Over the course of your journey through Vardoran, you're pretty much guaranteed to get the exact same spells in pretty much the exact same order. The opportunity for variety exists, but you often have to go out of your way to get it. The first ultimate ability you unlock is always Merciless Charge from Quincy. There are many spells you don't get until far later in the game that very rarely see any use due to only having access for them for a short period in your adventure. Yeah, I can, I definitely agree with that. The intention is for you to get your hands on the more complex spells and ultimates later in the game as their varied uses may be easier to grasp with the context of some solid hours of gameplay under your belt. The path to becoming the ultimate vampire is one we crafted with volumes of twisted love, but we want to give you more. Let's shake it up and add some deadly spice to your life. A little deviation for your deviants who enjoy multiple playthroughs. Flexibility for everyone, including those enjoying their first dive through the challenges of embracing their vampire nature introducing spell points oh thank god okay this uh, this actually looks good i'm already i'm already kind of happy hearing this but we'll see when you slay certain v bloods and drain them of their power in addition to any recipes imparted through their blood knowledge they give you a fraction of magical energy these spell points come in various flavors divided by spell school and then further divided into three tiers for instance, slaying Clive the Firestarter now awards the recipe for the alchemy table, minor explosive boxes, and one tier one chaos spell point. Huh, okay. I'm just taking a quick look to see if there's anything else here that sticks out. Okay. Oh, so I guess this is the spell point here. Interesting. Oh, it's a chaos spell point. 
That's why it's purple. Okay, I see. A chaos spell point icon in the bottom left looking mysterious. Oh yeah, it definitely looks mysterious. <laughs> the spell which has been redesigned with these changes has the spells divided between three tiers. Each tier represents a level of complexity rather than strength. Vampires will be introduced to more complex spells after they've gotten their feet wet, unlocking the second tier of spells fairly early in their journey into Dunley Farmlands with Vincent the Frostbringer and Craig the Undead General. Okay. All right, let's take a quick look at what's going on here. I don't see anything too different about this. Oh, the icons at the top are different. All right, so at the top here, we have the different trees of magic. I find it interesting that they remove the words and instead put icons which is probably a good move. I mean, I don't really see why they would have removed that, but I, I do like the way the icons look, so eh, I'll take it. Um, looks like instead of a spell tree now, we have a spell circle. I feel like I'm looking at the circle of fits over here with all these spells. <laughs> if you know that, if you get it, you get it. But um, wow, this is, this is so crazy. So, oh wow, spell jewel, ruinous stone. Oh, does it just show all the jewels of your, of this? what hold on why is there a hmm okay so it looks like the jewel is applied to aftershock it's the only jewel i see here why is it here it says ruinous stone but well, why are there a bunch of slots i don't understand this or is it just showing every jewel for that tree because that's not how i'm trying to figure out the practical purpose of this box here I, I'm trying to, I'm having a hard time figuring it out, but uh, I'm sure I'm going to be reading forward. I might make more sense of it. I'm just kind of getting first impressions. Um, okay, here's the dash right here. I don't see any new spells. I don't know what this is, though. I, I'm not sure exactly what this is. Um, and it looks like there's two more. There's one here and one here. So I am not sure what i'm looking at here also the numbers so one three one like what is this like i don't and they all have different patterns to the numbers so i don't really know what i'm looking at here that's kind of weird huh oh wait hold on there's an unlock spell button But where do you see how many things you have to unlock with? Is this what that is? Like, is it the, I get this and then, okay, I can unlock this or I don't understand. Hmm. I feel like I have a lot of questions now just looking at this. Like this is, and, and the thing that really throws me off is this box. It's like, it says spell jewel rune is stone, but that's only applied here. If I were to click on the other spells, would this change? Or is this just going to put every single... See, I wish that they equipped uh, jewels in, other, in these other slots, because then we would know, okay, so all the slots have their jewels here. Which, I mean... I don't really understand what have it... Like, maybe hovering the jewels will give us answers, but I don't understand what the purpose of this box here is. I'm still trying to figure that out um hmm, that's kind of interesting but yeah other than that i don't see um i don't see anything else that makes sense so far okay no fancy chaos dash for you yet oh no <laughs> well i guess you gotta work toward it huh this will offer tremendous flexibility in the journey without sacrificing meaningful progression or overwhelming newer players with too many confusing options for instance, by the time you're making your way to Act 2, there, uh, where you only had access to Merciless Charge, you could now have access to two of four potential ultimates, including a new one that we think the necromancers out there were really going to enjoy. Oh, so it looks like you get to summon some skelly boys here. I, I like this. Arise, my champions. That's how I imagine that being read. Oh, by the way, I, I should probably say this. This looks like a brand new spell. The fact that they're just summoning like a Skelly Boy ar army is kind of interesting because right now we don't have anything that summons skeletons that isn't like a standalone spell that you don't have to hit anything with. Like the conditions for spawning skeletons has always been you kill a target and then the skeletons spawn from the target's body, essentially, um, that you killed. Um, 
So the idea that you can just summon a little skeleton army, oh man, that's gonna be cool. That's gonna be really cool. I wonder if it's like a ton of them because I already see like what, one, two, three, four, five skeletons? That's gonna be interesting. All right, moving on. This also offers us more freedom in how we design V-Bloods for the future, which we've been able to employ in the designs of the new bosses in 1.0. Spells can be built without needing to closely associate or theme them with a boss to accompany them, letting us uh, be a little letting us be a little more creative in our magic and monster design going forward without them restricting one another. Master your magic. We aren't just changing how spell progression works, there's also more to it than that. We've also, we're also adding new ways to advance your vampire through a new station we're calling the Altar of Stygian Awakening. St Stygian? St Stygian? St Sty St well, I'm gonna go with Stygian. <laughs> The Altar of Stygian Awakening. Here you'll tap into ancient knowledge to unlock your forgotten potential. At first when I saw this picture on Twitter, because um, they posted this on Twitter on, I believe, Tuesday? Yeah, I think it was Tuesday they posted it. Um, I remember the first thing I thought of, oh my god, diagonal walls. What, what I thought here was interesting is at first I thought this was going to be like a recharging station for like, I don't know, uh, maybe the necklaces, the artifact uh, necklaces we're supposed to get, which are supposed to replace the shards we currently have that we have as furniture items. Uh, the big ones, you know, the glowy ones, but uh, I don't know. This is, I'm not really sure. It says un uh, uncover dark secrets and grab hold of their power. So I wonder if that's what this is, if this is just going to be like a thing where you can just interact and charge up your necklace or something, or if it's like something else with another purpose. I'm really curious, um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll have to see. Each spell school has a tier of passive effect that can be unlocked to provide bonuses that modify your gameplay. Some as simple as situational boosts in effectiveness. Others provide unique opportunities like spawning blood orbs that you can pick up to recover health or summoning skeletal warrior after you feed. Being tied to your altar, these effects can be unlocked by gathering materials from the new endgame zone events and pulling together with your clanmates to unlock them one at a time in whatever order you like. This means you all share a sort of clan-wide progression, Ooh. encouraging you to work towards a common goal that empowers you all and prepares you for the un oncoming challenges of facing the greatest threats to your rise. I'm not really sure what to make of this, honestly. The clan-wide progression idea is interesting. Is that something we don't really currently have other than like, I guess you could count like the shards, right? Like if you kill the shards, your clan members can, you know, for lack of a better word, attune to the shards, I guess, or channel the power off of the shards. But I mean, I don't know if that's like, I don't know. I, this is this is really weird. Let's take a look at the picture here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit just so we can get the entire photo in the in the shot. Altar of Stygian Awakening. Passive abilities. Tier one. Oh, hold on. Wait a second. Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3. Blood Spray. Critical Strikes. Okay, so this first one is Blood Spray. Critical Strikes leeches 5% health, and there is a 25% chance to spawn a Blood Orb when killing a target affected by Leech. Ooh. Something like this could be... Like, assuming that, it, that the target can be, like, anything, it doesn't have to be a boss, I assume that... Um, that would be really good, especially when you're going through, um, places like... Um, Silverlight, like when you're going through Brighthaven and you're kind of walking around and fighting tons and tons of enemies sometimes. Uh, I could see that being very useful, actually. Uh, I, I really want to know what all these other spells are. I assume this might be the skeleton uh, summoning thing that they mentioned, whatever that is. Uh, just looking at these, it, it kind of looks... Like, I don't even know what to make of these. These are so interesting. Like, I don't... The wolf one? I wonder if that's going to give us, like, some kind of perk to wolf form. I wonder what that could possibly be. 
that's my first thought is that this could be like a perk to wolf to wolf form like maybe you can fight in wolf form or something that would be cool like imagine um wow these are these are interesting man this is this is, this is something uh <laughs> this is definitely something the details of these effects and ui layout may change before launch okay everybody hates moving let's talk about one of the more unique features we're working on though we aren't entirely certain it will be ready for 1.0 update oh no <laughs> still we're interested in hearing your opinion on it because it tackles an issue that survival game players are very familiar with in the gothic dark fantasy world of Vardoran, nobody seems to have a friend with a pickup truck <laughs> Moving has always been a pain point for players, and getting stuck in Farbane and not having the energy to pick up and move your entire castle into a more convenient endgame areas has been a point of agony for vampires everywhere since we first launched V Rising back in May of 2022. This is the feedback we've been receiving for quite some time, with the inability to move your lair causing difficulties for players across every level of engagement. The initial wave of vampires on any server tends to settle in the first area of Farbane Woods and never move on to more convenient castle plots for later game con content because it's such a hassle. This makes it harder for players who join later and can't find a plot which can cause servers to stagnate long term because of the lack of fresh blood. Yeah, that's a big problem. Okay, let's take a look. Hold on a second. What's with this camera angle? How am I going to move all this slime? Yeah, that's a good question. Also, let's take a quick look at this outfit. Uh, this might be a dyed piece of gear. Interesting. This case here is new. This uh, this looks like some kind of storage case. That is definitely new. Um, I assume it's a storage case because of the shape of it. I could be wrong. I find it interesting that this case is not centered on the wall. I wonder if there's a reason for that or if this was just to get the, the stuff all in one shot uh, and a small like picture. That's really interesting. But yeah, this definitely looks like a new storage container. This here, this little branch here that's over top. I wonder if that's a tree glitching through the wall again. That's an issue we currently have in the game. I really hope they get rid of that where the trees just bleed through the wall because they're too big and they just and the thing is too it's not like you can go and like kill it and then just like oh it's it's gone now we're good because that's just not how that's not how it works because the trees will always grow back and start see seeping through the walls again so i wonder if that's what we're seeing here i really hope not um okay so look in here i don't see anything new with furniture other than this case here um these I think are part of the gloom rot pack. So yeah, I don't see anything new. We're experimenting with a way to make it easier. Simply relocate. In a feature we're working very hard to try and make available for 1.0. We're making moving your entire castle from one location to another as painless as possible. Oh, wow. The process is fairly simple. Place a new structure we've made that will act as the castle heart in your relocated castle in an unreserved territory then interact with it you can now connect that heart to a real castle heart that you have ownership of this is uh this is definitely dunley this right here okay so it looks like they added like a new icon for merchant camps or like a instead of well i shouldn't say merchant camps but for vendors they looks like they added like a new icon for vendor spaces because this is wow i almost didn't recognize it right away because my eyes are all over the place but uh, this is currently where i have my castle my castle is uh right here i believe currently and then my bestie castle is over here that i that i built so this is the same plot it doesn't look like this has changed um yeah that that's really interesting actually it's like the castle that you wish to relocate. Oh, and we also have a new icon for open world markets. Okay, I literally just I literally just noticed that and then read it. <laughs> and then read it. Interesting. Okay. When you do so, you get access to a new version of the build menu. Within the build this build menu, you have access to every individual piece placed in the connected castle and can piece together an entirely new stronghold using the parts you already own. Let's 
go! Fuck yeah, let's go! I love this. Oh my god. Yes! Yes, castle builders rejoice! Woo! Okay, I'm not gonna make that noise again, but yeah, this is this is actually a huge deal. Holy crap. Alright, let's take a look at this. Just getting started moving a smaller castle. Okay. Hmm. That's really okay. Oh, I see what they mean here. So the pieces you've placed are already showing up here. But I don't know, that's so weird. Decorating, lighting. Okay, this is only part of the bar. This can't be the whole thing. Uh, oh, wait, something I wanted to mention. I'm going to go back real quick. When I mentioned the camera angle here, I really hope that you can angle the camera like this now because taking screenshots for this game without like a mod or anything is a pain in the ass. <laughs> Just saying. When you confirm it, your old castle disappears and your new one solidifies and forms. Any pieces that went unused are, re are reduced to their base materials for you to reuse as you like. Just make sure you remember to make space for your prisoners and servants. There are some structures you must place to complete the move, so you won't be able to leave them behind. Okay, good. Oh, that's awesome. So now I don't have to like move my, my servants from like one castle to another. That's wow. Wow, that's nice. Complete castle relocation. Relocate structures and items from the linked castle to the new in, uh, to the new territory. Zero out of 166 structures placed. Okay. Remaining structures will be recycled and their resources will be deposited around the new castle heart. Around the new castle heart? What are we going to get? Like a flood of items in one spot? Oh my god. The UI for this section is not final, but it should give you the right idea. Okay. Just like that, you've relocated entirely from one corner of Vardoran to any other, as easy as placing it down to your castle heart's content. Wow. If you were worried about it taking forever to put your wallpaper back down after the move, that's also been a lot, uh, made a lot easier. Also, wallpapers no longer cost materials. I'm looking at how, I'm looking at how they're clicking here. And I wonder if it's like an individual click or if it's like a click and drag. Because that, that, that mouse looks super smooth going across here. I wonder if it's click and drag and it just does the whole wall. I mean, granted, I do like the individual like pieces and stuff like that. So this definitely looks a lot faster than what I'm currently doing. So and I'm and I'm pretty fast at this. So eh, it's interesting. Portents of the night. We truly hope you enjoyed this peek into what's right around the corner for you, our most precious nightkin. As the year goes on and the sun rises, the shadows grow longer and darker, and it is within those shadows that you will find promises of approaching greatness. Big announcements are right around the corner. Things are about to get very interesting. Have you got feedback about the potential Newcastle moving feature? Want to discuss it with other vampires or make sure we hear your opinion? Connect with us on our socials down below. Castle moving was not on my bingo card for this year. <laughs> if uh, this actually ends up coming out with 1.0, I will be impressed. Like that, that is crazy. Cause this is something that I haven't thought much about, but this is definitely really true, especially for like, new players when it comes to like you know getting stuck in farbane because a lot of times like the new players in on the map are not gonna have you know the prowess to fight you know adam <laughs> you know they're not gonna have the the equipment the items the experience or the preparation to fight i don't know octavian you know they're not gonna want to put a castle uh, immediately right next to like the highest level stuff like no one's gonna start in the cursed forest as a new player in the game it's just not it's not happening right so giving people a chance to move their base as they go is amazing uh i cannot wait to see this because I, another thing too is that it's gonna create a situation where like there's less contention around grabbing specific plots on a server so like Let's say someone takes a spot that you want. There's always that chance that they could move and that spot frees up and that you can get that spot later. Um, so that that's actually really, really nice. I, I really love this. I mean, I guess the question I have is if you're in the process of moving your castle, how does this work on a PVP server? Like, do you get um, 
protection to your castle that you know you can't siege or something like i don't understand like how is that going to work and even if it's like on the pve server like mine how is this going to like how is this going to work like does the other castle heart have to have blood in it in order for you to initiate this process uh does it still have to have blood in it in order for this process to continue like i i kind of wonder how that linking is going to work i don't see any like immediate issues with this um change i think that if anything this will definitely help with like the long-term like longevity of the game in some ways and also just keeping servers fresh um you know there's a lot of servers out there with empty castles that just decay over time and maybe it's on a plot that uh you know someone else wanted but oh no i already built my castle somewhere else and i don't have any more castle hearts like with, with a change like this there's not going to be a need for people to want to have more than like maybe three castle hearts i think because like for me on my server i have like three uh per vampire but on most servers it's only two so i think this is going to be really nice because this also gives you an opportunity to just like build a new castle somewhere else uh not only without getting like new materials and stuff like that which can save a shit ton of time i can't i cannot stress that enough how much time that would save but it also gives you an opportunity to just kind of move around and explore the rest of the map you know over time so like for example I have three castles currently on my server. If I want to move my castle to the Cursed Forest, like let's say I'm like getting tired of Gloomrot and I said, you know what? I don't want to live in Gloomrot, uh, sorry, Gloomrot anymore. I want to live over in the Cursed Forest. Well, then this gives me an opportunity to just move my castle and build a new Cursed Forest thing. This could, I can see this having a lot of practical uses, uh, especially for like servers who like run events and stuff that want to do like, uh, you know, they want to structurally build a new castle or uh, a venue for a specific event. This is going to be way more um, conducive to like community building, I think. I think this is going to definitely, you know, be a lot easier. Or even if like, let's say you have a friend on your server, but their castle is super far away and you want your castle next to your friend's castle. Now you can be their neighbor. You know, this is something that I can I can definitely see. Uh, being a huge advantage and, and even like I, I'm just thinking if there's like any real like exploitation issues that might arise from this I can't think of anything specifically uh, at least from like my perspective I I mean I don't play pvp so I can't really I can't really formulate a plan to exploit if that makes sense uh, naturally I'd have to like really think about it for a while but this is this is this is huge I mean this is like totally unexpected I did not expect this at all um it, it just kind of it just kind of blows my mind really because it's something that i didn't even think of like <laughs> this is really cool i i absolutely love this uh going back to some of the other stuff and some questions that i have is uh like going going through here i have no idea what these are uh also i'd like to know like are the tiers based on how much progress you've made like do they just go from left to right or do you just choose as a clan which one you want to focus per tier like is it just one uh from each tier per like like for example let's say i have a clan right and let's say i want my clan to uh you know i have you know these spells or whatever and we worked toward the goal do I, as a clan leader, just choose, hey, we're going for this one, this one, and this one, and then those three are the ones that we get? Or is it like, and, and maybe you can change them out? Or is it something else? Like, like how are we... I wonder how we're even going to get this. This is like so weird. I have no idea what to make of this, honestly. Um, I have like a million things going through my head when I look at this. Like, are we eventually going to be able to unlock every single one of these and just become like the all powerful vampires we know we can be? Or is this going to be something else? Like, this is actually really weird. I have so many questions. <laughs> Let me see if there's anything else I wanted to mention. Oh yeah, having a new uh, undead spell where you just kind of raise the dead yourself and then just have like your own little army. Oh man, that's gonna be so much fun. That's gonna be so cool. This spell tree looks crazy. It looks like, like I said, it kind of reminds me a little bit of like the Circle of Fits. <laughs> but uh, it, it's kind of crazy. I, I don't know. There's a lot of uh, interesting uh, nuggets and knowledge. Uh, what they mentioned before with the 
um, with the bosses, ha like not linking to specific spells. It looks like they followed through here with what they were saying because they they announced that I want to say maybe if not two, maybe three updates ago. I think they vaguely mentioned something about this if I remember correctly. So that's kind of cool, but I don't know. I, I like that, um, that they're going to make things a lot, uh, a lot more versatile. It looks like they're really working on how to retain the player. Cause I feel like a lot of people, they give up early because, you know, something goes wrong or like, and, and even like for PVE, you know, like they get to a boss, they have a hard time. They can't, you know, they, they have a hard time progressing. Maybe they, you know, can't clear it and you know for whatever reason and especially if you're on like a solo uh game file where you're just playing by yourself i could see that being a little bit of an issue so yeah uh i think we're going to see probably a huge shift in server activities based on this change i can see people sticking around way longer um but i i guess the question i would have is if you're able to move your castle, do you have to have vision of the area that you're moving to before you move your castle? Or do you have to like, like, how does that work? You know, that's something that I would like to know. So uh, yeah, this, this is actually a really, really cool update. Um, so yeah, what do you guys think? Do you think there's anything in here that kind of stood out to you? Anything that you think uh, might be uh, really interesting going forward. Are there any questions you have for the uh, for the devs that you'd like to ask that, you know, if you had the opportunity to ask them, you would uh, based on this update? I mean, I, I, I can already think of a few questions already, but wow. Um, yeah, so thank you so much, guys, for uh, checking out my video here on the dev update number 25 for V Rising Spellcraft Unbound. And uh, yeah, I'm actually going to be streaming V Rising later today at 5 o'clock p.m. PST. So if you're free around that time, feel free to stop by and say hello. Um, but yeah, we're going to be doing some castle decorating on stream. So yeah, I hope to see you all there. Thank you again for uh, taking the time to watch the video. Please like, share, subscribe and all that. And as always, Shello out.